Hello friends, my name is Eunice and welcome to a What's on My iPad video. So I'm a student, I'm a master's student and I also do content creation and other life things and that's what I use my iPad for. Studying, some work, reflections, content creation and other lifey things. I've got the iPad Air 5 2022 model with the M1 chip and it's been amazing. I've got a whole unboxing video on my channel so go ahead and watch that if you're interested. I'll have a lot more details about exactly what model it is, what accessories I've got, all of that in that video. And today I'll just be going through what's inside the iPad itself. Starting with the lock screen. I downloaded with this really pretty wallpaper of Unsplash. It's a great website that has a lot of free images. We've got the Samsung The Frame TV and we download a lot of really high quality artwork for displaying on The Frame as well. I might do a whole video on that if you're interested. So that's where this wallpaper is from, if you can see. I like the really minimal clean and pastel look and then once i unlock this is my home screen let me screen record this is my home screen i think i got this wallpaper off pinterest or unsplash i can't exactly remember if i can find it then i'll link it below but if not then i love pink i don't know if you can tell <laughs> everything's pink and the background wallpaper is also pink and pastel -y, so I like how calming it is apart from the fact that I've got hundred and forty eight notifications under essentials it's pretty calming and pretty easy to look at it's not cluttered so it doesn't make me stressed so going through each of them the clock calendar thing I got that off Widget Smith it's a great Apple widget and it's got a whole bunch of um, different widgets that you can change and customize and there are lots of things you can do with it. So a lot of my widgets, which I only have three, are from Widget Smith. So I've got that pink clock calendar widget. I've got a, a Bible verse from Romans 15, 13. I got that from Pinterest and then I just saved it and put it through Widget Smith. The clock calendar is a medium widget and the Romans Bible verse is a large widget. Like I said, I'm a student. I study a Master of Divinity, which is at Bible College in theology, the Bible, and I also do some part-time casual marking for law school. I used to be a lawyer, so I mark some exams and assignments for uni students. So I've got my iPad split into the first page. This page is for study and work, and the next page is for fun and creativity. So let's start with this first page, and I've split it to essentials, write, and read. Let's start with essentials. So under essentials, I've got my two different email apps. I personally prefer using Outlook, but I do have a Gmail as well. For my masters, the college has Gmail as their default. And I know that you can probably put Gmail on Outlook, but I can't be bothered figuring out how to do that. So for now, I use two different email apps. I like the Outlook app a lot more than the Apple default mail app because I can actually search for my email and I'll search through the entire database, all of my emails, whereas I have, hadn't figured out how to do that on the default Apple email app. They only saved from the past 30 days or something, or sometimes even less, like 10 days. And then I can't find my emails from before that. So that's why I like the Outlook app. Next is Gmail. Of course, I don't think I need to get into gmail most people probably know what that is a bit boring next up is notion i don't use notion as much as i would like to 
I do use Notion and I did copy this dashboard off another creator. I'll see if I can find it. It was a while ago. I do use it for some things. I don't put my whole life on there. That's one that I recently updated, my reading directory. So I've got all of the books that I've read or am reading this year, which isn't a lot, I know. I have been a huge reader, but this year I just haven't because I've been studying and I need to read a lot for my studies. So I haven't had as much brain space to read for myself. So that's one example. And then I've got Google Calendar. So this is my calendar. Google Calendar, I'm sure you know what that is as well. I love Google Calendar mostly because I can change the colors and I like how there's this pastel vibe going on. That's under essentials and that's just because these are the essential apps that I use on a regular basis. It's mail, it's notion, it's calendar, all the essentials. Next up, let's look at write. So these are all of the programs that I use for writing related tasks. So whether that's writing for my assignments, taking notes for class, although I sometimes use Notion to take notes, I haven't fully figured out a system yet. So of course I've got Google Drive. I've got Google Drive and that has all of the Google Docs on it. This is helpful for a lot of different things. I've got Google Docs. I do use that for a lot of things again. I do use Google Docs to take notes for my lectures and my church uses it a lot as well for like leaders meeting minutes or Bible study material and other things like holiday itineraries, etc. Google Sheets, that's just all the Excel spreadsheets, but Google, Google Sheets, I'm sure you know what that is, that's boring. I do have OneNote. I was trying to figure out whether to use OneNote, Notion, or Google Docs to take my lecture notes, and I haven't fully decided yet, so I haven't used OneNote much, but it's there in case I need it someday. Good notes. I love good notes. You can see that I've just done my 2022 reflections and 2023 goals. I use my good notes for a lot of things. I just write general reflections. My reflections, notebook, I've got lots of stuff. I've got planners, so I've got these. I made all of these templates I made myself, by the way. It's pretty easy, you just do it on. I did it on Microsoft Word and then I exported them as PDF. So I've made this daily planner template that I fill in on. I've got a sermon notes and reflections document. So I made this myself again. You can put in the date, who is preaching, the title of the sermon series, the Bible passage, and there's lots of room for notes more notes if I need more than one page and then I've got like a sermon reflection where I write down what I learn how this affects if any of these if you guys ever want any videos where I just go through how I fill these out then let me know in the comments below I'd be more than happy to I like to take a screenshot of the bible verse of the passage that it, the sermon is on and then I like to highlight or sometimes I'll circle, underline, make little notes alongside, along the way. It's really good. I love having an iPad. So that's good notes. I love good notes. Next up is just the normal notes app. I don't really use it. Sometimes I'll use it if I ask the lecturers a question and um, I just want to quickly note down what they said. I'll just pull up the notes app and then quickly take notes of what they said notes or something. Next is Pages. That's the Apple Microsoft Word equivalent. I don't really use this as well. I tried to once when I was doing my church history assignment on Jonathan Edwards' religious affections and that's the only time I've used this. Next app is Zotero. I love <laughs> Zotero. It is my referencing app. It's so much better than EndNote. If you are a student or you need lots of referencing, download Zotero. It's so good. All I need to do is add 
You can scan the barcode of a book or a resource you can add by ISBN. I would highly recommend Zotero for your referencing needs. Next is Word. I do use Word a bit more than I use Pages. I just like it a bit more. It's a bit more intuitive. It doesn't crash. You do need an Office 365 account to use it though. I can type, I can write using the Apple Pencil. And lastly, Microsoft Excel. I probably use Google Sheets more. So there's my write section and next up is my read. So I've got these six apps under read. First is the ESV Bible. I use this a lot. I use it for classes. I use it for church. I use it for my own purposes. It's such a good app. It's got all of the books of the Bible. I can search for any key terms. So if I want to type a word, it's grouped under each book. Next is Perlego. This is a really great app and it's got a lot of books on here. So many books and you can just read them as ebooks. It's a library in an app. Next is Apple Books. So I do use this sometimes for like I've got Untangling Emotions or a Circular Creed on here. Next is Adobe Acrobat Reader. I use this the most to read articles, articles or books or scannings. I can highlight, I can make notes, handwritten notes, I can annotate, I can sign, I can fill and type. Acrobat Reader is amazing. I've also got Adobe Digital Editions and I've got this because I've got a Kobo e-reader and Kobo is very much linked with Adobe Digital Editions. Next is Accordance. This is a Bible software. It's got like this is um, at the Book of Acts and then it'll tell you what the original Greek was and there's dictionaries in there. Touch Wish and it tells me what word it was in Greek. That's, and that concludes my first page. Now on to the next page. Here I've got a quote from C.S. Lewis. Now at last they were beginning chapter one of the great story no one on earth has ever read, which goes on forever, in which every chapter is better than the one before. I love that. I love a lot of C.S. Lewis quotes, hence my background, the made for another world quote. So first up is create. So this is a lot of my creative things mostly things that I make my thumbnails with or other editing needs. Um, I've already shown you Widget Smith, so I won't show that again. Canva. I use Canva to make my thumbnails. Yeah, you can see a lot of my thumbnails here or the ones that don't make the cut. I also made my outro, so I've got my outro pink like subscribe, next video thing that I made on Canva as well. Next is Lightroom. I use this a lot as well. I use this to brighten or edit my photos for my thumbnails to make the, to adjust the colors and just make it better. Retouch. I use retouch to, retouch I use to remove objects in the background. Uh, and Adobe Fresco, I only just downloaded this today and that I'm hoping to handwrite and put them on the videos so that I can have like a handwrite situation going on. That's create. And lastly, play. This isn't necessarily play, but uh, I've got oh, miscellaneous things. I've got podcasts, Apple podcasts. Um, I haven't actually used it. I've got YouTube, of course. I've got Zoom. <laughs> I know Zoom isn't exactly play, but it's not read or write, and it's definitely not an essential. I don't want it to be an essential <laughs> for my life. So it's under this miscellaneous. I've got Libby, which is our library where I can read if I want. And lastly, Pinterest. I've got Pinterest to, to get a lot of inspo and backgrounds and quotes. And lastly, I'll share what's on my bottom panel. You can change the apps on the left side. On the right side, it's just my most recently used apps. So I've got settings, of course. I've got Chrome. I was trying to look up how to do a screen recording. <laughs> it's 
so embarrassing. <laughs> and I've got my photos app, which has a lot of screenshots, a lot of my screen recordings and my thumbnail clips. I've got Spotify and I've got my app store. And there we have it. That's what's on my iPad. I don't have a lot of apps compared to a lot of other people, but I like it that way. I like how minimalistic it is and that I basically mostly only have the apps that I actually use on a regular basis. So I hope that you enjoyed this and that you found it helpful and maybe you got some inspiration for your own iPad. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Please give it a like and a comment if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more of my content. I will see you in the next one. Bye!